I'm bad at intros. I'm, I'm going to liquid metal my graphics card. Let's do this. Okay, now we're going to start off by taking out all the backplate screws. And obviously trying to keep, keep track of all of them because we don't want to lose them. Good thing about this backplate is that we can actually use it as a tray for working on the GPU, like cleaning off the GPU die and actually applying the liquid metal. Make sure we don't ruin any of the thermal pads underneath. We'll set that guy down there as a tray. We're going to take out all the actual screws holding the card to the block. These guys all have plastic washers on them, so I'm setting them up top there, trying to keep them you know, in order, but setting them up on their heads so that way the plastic washers just stay with them. If I was cool, I'd have a Gamers Nexus mod mat, but I've been lazy and haven't ordered one. I don't have an actual workbench because as you can see, the, the two tubes coming off the top of the water block still is still hooked up in my system. We'll look at that later when I install it back on the motherboard. Just making sure I've got all of them. Okay, but now we're gonna pull the card off. wiggle it so that way we don't you know, get thermal paste everywhere as well as not bending the card and ruining any of the thermal pads underneath. Because thermal pads are expensive. Alright, we'll just move the block up to the top there. got that groove along the edge it's sunken in a little bit and kind of it works perfectly just as a tray you do have to make sure that you don't you know that you're lining up the all the pads and stuff underneath Now we gotta clean the hell out of this guy. The uh, RDNA 2 die size, at least on the 6800 XT, and I believe the 6800 as well, uh, and 69, all the, the ones above, is a massive die, and obviously requires a lot of thermal goo. and really trying to keep it out of the SMDs around the side. Now we're just going to use Q-tips dipped in uh, rubbing alcohol just to try to scrape up as much of the stuff built up around the edge. Again, trying to keep it out of the SMDs. More work just trying to get all this stuff out of the SMDs. I edited it down because I spent way too much time doing it. It was, there was so much. There's so many of them too. They're really spaced close together right up next to the edge of the die. Now coming in with the, the Thermal Grizzly. Uh, thermal Interface Material Cleaner. It's, a, it's just acetone. It just, you know, clean the surface down really well. And now I'm using the Thermal Grizzly Shields uh, Conformal Coating, which is their fancy way of saying nail polish. It smells just like nail polish. This video gets more than 100 likes. I will do a review on how it does as nail polish, just for the lulls. But yeah, you want to make sure that you get a nice, 
even total coating of all your SMDs around the die, because those are what you want to really protect from the liquid metal. The liquid metal is conductive, and if it gets on there, it'll short them out and your card's gonna die, just straight up. So that's why I have it kind of, it's not exactly the cleanest application, but it covers everything up and there's, there's nothing gonna be getting in there. Now I use some of that acetone to clean up around on the, the edge of the die, just because I'm a weirdo like that. All right, now it's liquid metal time. Now I'm trying to be really careful, even though this die is super huge, I don't want to put too much on there and then have to try to suck it up later. And I'm trying to err on the side of caution and not put like a crazy amount of liquid metal on there and then work backwards. You can always add more, it's hard to make it less. So I think I put too much here. I tried to, I suck some back up. As we'll find out here soon enough, I should have just left it at that. And then we're gonna take our neato, all black murdered out Q-tips and start spreading this out across the die. Oh, I forgot to mention, you have to let the um, conformal coating sit for at least 30 minutes. You're going to want to do it in a ventilated room, which I did not, because it stinks. So, just be aware of that. But yeah, we're going to want to get nice, even, total dye coverage. So there's a lot. Yep, going back for more. Oh, put some on there. Oh no. Oh no, better take it off. It might be too much. Oh, you took it all off, you idiot. As you can see, my hands are shaking. I, I, I really don't want to screw this up because this is my only graphics card at the moment. There we go. All right, now we're just gonna continue spreading the rest of that. Again, nice, even, clean coating across the surface of the die because that's what you want, making that contact with the water block. Just slowly dab it around. You don't want to try to just push it all over the place because then you'll just get it to fall off the edges straight onto the, where those SDs are at. And you really, you don't want to risk it, so just try to keep it on the die. I start taking some of the excess and putting it just up on top of the block. That way, you know, both sides interface together and there's not just one coated side trying to, you know, bond with a just purely clean one. Plus it gets some of the excess off there, that way it's not gonna smush over the, the edges. Again, just trying to get, get all the corners covered up to all the edges because you don't want to leave anything you know, 
uncoated because this stuff doesn't really smush and out like normal thermal paste. Close up to see the work, and yeah, it looks like there's a little, little bit too much on there. So yeah, we pulled some off, smoothed it back out, dabbing it to get some of the last bits there. Put the extra from the, the Q-tip on top of the, the water block. You can see it's got a little bit better coverage. And now we're just gonna go <laughs> lick it and stick it. Nice firm press on there. Make sure everything stays, and then yeah, make you know put those screws back in order. Make sure they've got the plastic washers on them. Go for the four around the die at first, cross pattern. Make sure it's all nice and tight, and then go around the edges from there. Or at least that's how I do it. And we install it back into my, my desktop PC. Solid. Let's stress test it for two minutes. for an 8C, really. That's what's up, though. I was super nervous about that. You can really tell that, like, it's it's thermally putting more into the water because, like, I have a, a temperature readout on my uh, Steel Series keyboard here that's hooked up to 8 to 64 that gives me a coolant temperature, CPU temp, and then gives me the GPU junction temperature, because on AMD, that's the, the higher temperature. And I just want to know what the, what the hottest spot is. Oh my god, look at that. Card's pulling like 300 fucking watts. Oh, get it. 300 watts under fucking 60C. It's gonna go, but let's try running a. Well, I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit, and we'll try running time spy. All right, guys. So yeah, liquid metal's working great. Um, the only thing I'll say is, is that 
if only if you're overclocking to do it. Otherwise, it's a lot of work and a lot of risk you're taking just for a couple degrees off. And plus, if you're running a liquid cooled loop, it's going to make the, the room that you have your computer in a lot hotter because it's exchanging that heat a lot better. But I'd say this was a success. Let me know if you want me to do Thermal Grizzly nail polish. Catch you guys later.